selective colouring has been done many times on, on YouTube but um, I had a request from one of our class members to uh, explain it how it was done and also was there any other ways of doing it and I will show that as well in this particular tutorial there will be three methods of selective colouring and this one here is a bride holding a bouquet and it's quite fashionable with wedding photographs uh, it's it's uh, some people like the, the format of this selective colouring and others don't but it uh, can be accepted if a similar photograph in colour is, uh, is taken uh, the beauty of uh, selective colouring is that the the photo remains uh, the photo remain uh, is black and white, and the uh, the bouquet she's holding you have the colouring, and the bride remains uh, elegant and uh, protected from cosmetic uh, fashion. So if she had purple lips, you wouldn't show up in this format, but it, you still have the bouquet of flowers. Okay, so first we duplicate the layer by hitting this duplication layer over on the icon layers channel we make a duplicated layer and we go to colors and we desaturate now the best one out of out of the three of these is the luminosity it just seems to give it a bit more highlight I don't know whether you notice when I click the luminosity with a change of the uh, the color of the flowers but it gives you a bit more highlighting hit OK now we go to layers and we make a layer mask. We add a layer mask, uh, full white opacity. Now we go to our paintbrush tool and we choose a fuzzy brush. That's in case I go over the edge a little bit with the flowers. Now uh, the foreground colour is black and we just paint over the area of where the, uh, the flowers are held in the hand. Now it's quite easy to do with uh, within GIMP. I'll just enlarge this um, a little using the plus key on the on the keyboard, so you can see a little bit more detail. You can see the reason I picked a fuzzy brush in case you go too close to her arm and you don't get the flesh tone come through. There we go. We can paint it all black, and you can notice up in the up in here it shows you what area has now been uh, painted black and what's missed. You can see the boomerang effect down the bottom there. That's this part here. It hasn't been coloured in or erased or painted over. And that's it. We've got our colour coming through nicely. Going on just a touch around the edges. The other thing is the she's holding the stems of the flowers. So I reduce my brush. We're using the square bracket keys on the keyboard, and that's the stems of the flowers there. They're green, and so we just paint over the top of those. And that's our job completed. We just uh, zoom out a little bit, and that's the, that's the format. So it's she's quite elegant with a with a bunch of flowers. You just right click the uh, top layer and flatten the image and brings them the layers all together. That's that particular way. So I'll close that off and I'll load the second session on selective uh, colouring. This one here I'll load the motor car. Now I'm, I've chosen this one because it's quick and easy and it has uh, square you know a lot of straight lines you don't need to make a duplication layer or, or uh, layer masks you, you can use a duplication layer in case of errors now I'll just enlarge this a fraction so you can see what's happening I go to my free select tool and I start selecting around the car now you'll take a lot more detail around when you're doing your particular uh, selection but this one here has got a lot of straight lines so it makes it much easier to uh, to get around the, the motor car you just click around the edges I'm not doing real close because I could blow up the photo much bigger and uh, do a greater a better job but in this tutorial we uh, often fight the clock so I'm going around this one reasonably fast and right here and the tire we we'll keep the tire in there and we go up underneath, won't worry about the shadow and across here once again you come around the tyre of the car and click on and that completes the selection now we go up to select and we invert our selection now we go to colours 
and once again we desaturate. I'll, I'll choose uh, luminosity again because it seems to be a good one. Hit OK. Now because I've used that form of uh, turning the background black and white, I still have my colours in the uh, colour channel. So I'll go and return to my uh, normal channel on the uh, channels layer, uh, gu uh, dialog. And I go to colours, and I go to colour balance. Now I turn the, uh, I think the red up, and the yellow down. And that gives me the uh, sepia effect. So I hit OK. I go up to select and select none. Now there's selective colouring. Uh, put in a, a reasonably modern car. I'm talking about uh, it's getting close to vintage, but it gives you the uh, the old-fashioned sepia background with selective colouring. So that, that sort of effect is quite good too. So the, the third one is a another type of selection. And this one here, I'll open a flower. And this one here, the, the image is a little bit larger than the others. Once again in this format, there's no need to make layers or layer masks. And what we use here is the foreground selection tool. That's this fellow here. It's quite a neat little tool and it's quite good on this sort of format because there's a lot of tight edges within that flower. And this selection tool is quite good, I like this one. And you just roughly go around the flower to indicate what areas you want it to uh, select from. Now you don't have to be real accurate, you can actually go real quick if you wish. But you give the software a bit of a, a, bit of a break and, and you know, hang to the edges a little so it knows exactly where it's going. You notice there I didn't have to go up inside the uh, inside the flower there to select that very tight part of the selection and I just select around roughly where I want to go and it, uh, the software or the plug-in or the filter does a, a very good job. I believe in the latest version of uh, GIMP coming out which is uh, 2.8 you, you don't need to do all this, it does it much quicker. Now you notice that it's in the lasso tool format that's because it's doing the fuzzy selection that I've just done. So it automatically chooses that so when you click the completion you have a blue a layer mask comes in the background and your brush is now changed to a brush. Your, your selection has now been changed to a brush and of course the brush colour is black it doesn't really matter what colour it is it's just an indicator to inform the uh, the plugin or the software that it uh, or the filter that these are the colours you wish to preserve within that outer border of selection you just go around and I, I usually go over all the tonings because the tones can change a little as you notice there it's uh, quite a nice heavy pink there but it goes very light in those areas there I think that'll that'll get me out of trouble so once I let go the uh, the plug-in or the, the filter goes around and makes a tight selection around what I've chosen it still retains the the layer mask but it your uh, you can see the very tight selection there now you notice there the white has been picked as well because I marked that as I went through on the on the uh, on the paint brush. Now the paint brush is still selected but it's no longer used. We just hit, hit enter and it goes and switches onto the selection. Now you see how nicely it's selected with inside the flower there and inside that part there because I didn't need to go around with the selection tool and finally select all those because I informed the software that the boundaries was around that flower and the colour was those colours within those in that boundary line in the selection. So it's made my selection. Now I just go to select and invert the selection and of course then I can go to colours and desaturate. I'll hit luminosity again and click OK and it uh, it changes the background colour and so you, there you have it and of course you can do the same as the, the car one you can go in and change colours and do whatever you choose. We just go to select and select none that turns the selection off. Now that has that's the selected colouring. That's three methods you can use. Of course you can use the the quick mask which is down here in the far corner or you can go to uh, select and, and trigger the uh,
quick marks that way as well. But it's a, it's an old format, and it's, it would take a lot of work to uh, do the to do the painting around what you, what you wanted to select. But it's still used, and it's still very useful. And um, thank you for watching, and uh, don't forget to rate my video and visit my channel, and there will be a link to uh, a printout of this format in PDF format. Thank you for watching.